Boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not nothing, walk on. Man, you know, just kind of the day is, you know, at hand. It's time to get to it, man. <laughs> Say, man. So it's uh, Shannon Davis Willis. Uh, Wheels, Wheels yes. and Christina Richardson. Yes. Wheels, okay. I got it. We finna oh, rock out. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. Welcome to Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk, man. <laughs> so what's going on with y'all? Not much. We just here to talk about mental, mental health. health. I, yes. I, mental health. You know, what gives you the audacity? <laughs> <laughs> the mental audacity. <laughs> How do you come up with this scenario that you're able to talk about it? Like, because we've dealt with it. I think everybody deal with it mm -hmm. in some, yeah. you know, some form of fashion. Um, but we like to get to know the person. I know Miss um, Wheels, that's what I'm going to call you. And uh, yeah, Miss Richardson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make it sound real official. <laughs> <laughs> so just tell us a little bit about yourself, Miss Wheels. Have you always wanted to be in this field as no. a child growing up? Oh, definitely not. Because we take it all the way back. Like, yeah. As a child, yeah. what did you want to be? As a child, I always wanted to be an optometrist. Okay. Um, so I went to Xavier University, enrolled in pre-med, and I realized I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to be a teacher. Wow. You wasted all that, all that time. <laughs> a lot of it people do that. But I, you know what? I call it a learning experience, right? Because we were young and we are learning. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I did that. didn't want to do that. And so um, I was living in New Orleans at the time, and so mm -hmm. I was like, I need to leave, move to Atlanta. <laughs> I did a lot of moving. So uh, you did go to Atlanta? Yes, I lived in well, Atlanta for like three that. years, wow. yes. And then um, after that, I moved back home, got mm. married, then moved to Ohio. And that's when I realized, you know what, I need to help people. At least I want to help people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know in what capacity. I just knew I wanted to help them. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, if I want to help people. Did something happen Why you all of a sudden wanted to help people? Did something happen in your life? Yes, you know, I was married um, and my husband passed away. And so I How went through. How old were you? Ooh, I don't know, probably about 32 or something like that. Okay. But, um, but in that process, I saw a counselor, went to group therapy, did a whole bunch of uh, work on myself. And you saw how and helpful I, that was. Yes, and so okay, I saw how helpful that was. And so, gotcha. you know what, I was like, you know what, if I can get help from somebody else going through, because I think as black people, we really just don't know how to grieve. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what grief look like. Mm -hmm. And so for me to be young and also to have children to raise and then not really expecting my husband to die, it's like, okay, let me get some help. And so... When I took that and channeled that energy, went back to school, started all over again, went to, you know, um, undergrad school, started all over, started undergrad, and then I went to grad, became a counselor. Wow. Mm. Went it took a lot. lot. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like yeah. it takes a lot yeah. of steps to become a went counselor. Through a count, went through all that and got to where God wanted her to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so do you, do you have any regrets? No, not at all. Because I know that each of those steps, he was preparing me to be where I am today. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. And to become a counselor, do you have to go through all those steps to become a counselor? Yes, you do. How many How many years does it take normally? Ooh, like well, now and today? Because I know you were talking about, you know, it was different back then than it is now. I can't, I don't know what it takes today. And maybe Christina could um, elaborate. Elaborate, elaborate on that. Mm -hmm. But I know for me, because I went straight from undergrad to grad school and I went like summer semesters because I would determine because mm -hmm. you know because I'm older and I'm like I, I don't have time to waste and so for me it took me about two years mm -hmm. to finish grad school some people would take three mm -hmm. years but I did it because I was like determined to get it done and I knew I was on a timeline and mm -hmm. you're a counselor or a psychiatrist counselor a counselor yes and you know I would think that you wouldn't have to because I know that you are um counseling someone so you have to go over like behavioral you know yeah. things in school and stuff like that but i'm like you don't have to do the medicine part of it so i'm like two years it still sounds like a lot of years just for some yeah, counseling but, but you have to realize you're still dealing with people's mental health mm -hmm. right at the end of the day you know you need training to deal with mm -hmm. all of that because you know we look at people and we want to give them advice but honestly we don't need to give them advice we need to walk them through the process do you ever have somebody ever ask you 
Who are you to advise me? What have you ever been through? Mm -hmm. or, or what gives you the audacity? Mm -hmm. No, you know what? You were the first person to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> you were the first person There's a lot of firsts going in here. Yes, That's how we get down. You know? How many years have you been doing it now? Um, I've been doing it now. I was I started in 2016 actually seeing clients. So about five years now. That's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... Um, well, I'll let you go ahead and tell yeah. your story no, before no, I say I wanna, what I... I, I, I um, we want to bring you in right. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Miss Christina Richardson, mm -hmm. how's your day going? It's going good. I was telling your wife that I just got in from out of town, so. Wow, where'd you guys, where where, where, where were you at? Yeah. I was yeah. in Denver. Denver? What's yeah. going on up there? You know, just, they, I just think Colorado. Away. That's legalized marijuana. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're doing up there. I was not that's there. That's what they do up there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's what that's you were doing? No. Yeah. <laughs> But I made a pact with myself that I was going to stop waiting on friends to be ready to travel mm. and just go. Wow. And so that's, you know. Did it feel good? Yeah. Yeah. So, so did you know anyone there? No, not really. I just, you know, just went up there and just have a. Was have that a your first way. time? No. I, well, okay. As an adult, yes. Okay. I went uh, for a leadership uh, camp when I was in high school. That's been funny. You don't remember yeah. half of yeah, It was with church, so yeah. I ain't do nothing. In high school? Mm -hmm. And you can't remember what you done in high school? I was there for leadership. But yeah. she couldn't get away and do yeah. all the stuff that she probably wanted to do. What did she want to do, smoke weed? <laughs> no. I don't, I'm pretty sure it wasn't legal back then. It was not legal. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> But I get it, you know, like, but, so traveling is a thing that we like. We enjoy mm -hmm. traveling. I know I do. I can't, you know, you like it, right? Yes, I Or do. either you pretending real good because you sure will be happy when we go. <laughs> but but definitely, man, uh, that's that's mm -hmm. something that makes you feel better when you get out of town. And, mm -hmm. yeah, you just relaxing. Mm -hmm. You look out the window and you don't, you know, it's new to you. Get yeah. away from your regular routine. Yes. Yes. That's yes. the main thing. It's a good, it's a part of my self-care. So Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. so. Bringing, let's bring it on back. Bring come on, back. come on back. back. We want to get you back to council uh, <laughs> mindset, right? Okay, yes. But uh, before that, you want to go back to where it all well, started. Well, we were in high school a while yeah. ago. No, I want to <laughs> we go back high before school. high school. I want to know all of that. So I'm like Shannon. I've always wanted to be a counselor, okay. like from day one. Really? Yeah. I used to what counsel my dolls, you? and it's just something I naturally did. Your just parents some, didn't do it? No, no. I just... Not I'm, I once I was drawn to conflict, but people were drawn to me after conflict, or people were drawn to me for understanding, or just say be heard. Did you have any siblings? No, I was the only child. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could tell. For, well, for sixteen years. <laughs> okay. And then I got a sibling. Yeah, I could tell. For sixteen years, and then, then you got a sibling. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. No, but yeah. I can't. They're not playing. No. <laughs> They're not playing. I believe that uh, when I look at you and I look at your demeanor, I feel like I could talk to you, like yeah, about my problems. <laughs> yeah, talk just to a, me. You know, just tell you everything, <laughs> and then go to sleep or whatever. Wait back Be up. Be fine. Yeah, like dang man, she helped me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. You're yeah, talking yeah. like hypnosis. Yeah, and yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. It is not. Yeah, y'all, y'all mesmerizing. That's what it is. No, that is not. So it. let me let me ask you this. So you you say you always wanted to be a counselor, mm -hmm. and did you pursue it straight out of high school? Yep, I went to U of H, um, and they didn't have a psychology program at the time, so I did human family, uh, human development, family studies, mm. and then I ended up getting pregnant um, and had to come home because nobody would move to Houston with me so I could finish mm. school. What school did you go to? U of A? Mm -hmm. I, I would have thought at Prairie View that would have happened, but at U of A? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> And it didn't even so, happened down there. It happened at home, but that's another oh, story. Whoa, so, whoa. but <laughs> <laughs> that's like, you of H was not the culprit. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but I really loved it, and I wanted to wanted to continue. So I ended up going to UTA, and they had a psychology program. Okay. So I got my bachelor's in psychology from there. And then through having to be a mom and be full time and, you know. I love just, that it didn't stop you from going to school. No, but it delayed it. it delayed but I, it. it was my mission. Like, I was right. determined to finish. And so, full time student, full time mom, full time working. Did you have your mom and dad still around at that time? My dad passed away my senior year in high school, two months oh, before I graduated. Sorry, yeah. And then uh, I did have my mom. She's my, I always, I say I have a deep bench. Like, my son has two loving grandparents. His dad is mm -hmm. uh, in his life. And so, I had a deep seat of people who I could pull on to okay, like, hey, good. I got this yeah. to do and I got that to do, which I needed in my master's program because I was working full time and I was having to do hours and he was in baseball. So I had to apologize to him a lot about not being there mm -hmm. because I, I, the things I was doing was for him. Do you ever realize like, okay, 
before I say this question, no, I'm trying how to get long into the history. You, yeah, yeah. Okay, how long this. now have you been um, practicing? About the same time as Shannon. So I graduated December of 2016. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it took me, I ended up quitting my well paying job <laughs> to go and make $14 an hour. That's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, I wanna, but I want to go back to this question. Um, with all the people that you've counseled, because I know a lot of times, just like you say, you had to um, apologize to your son a mm -hmm. lot of times for different things. A lot of people who go through counseling, especially kids and stuff like that, you you realize that it's because their parents are working all the mm -hmm. time and don't mm -hmm. have that quality time to spend with them mm -hmm. Why they are a certain way. Do you ever look at certain situations and then reflect it back on your life and be like, I need to be doing this more. I need oh, to do, you know what I well, mean? Well, you know what? So in my friend circle, my everybody knows that my son has done something bad when he's with me. I don't have a problem being around my child. He goes mm -hmm. everywhere. A lot of times they're like, oh, you about, you about him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he's here, he's here. He would go to work with me. Okay. Like it never was a, people would see him and say, oh, what did he do today? And I'm like, he, today he's did, he did good. It's not a punishment today. Mm -hmm. But I think it created that bond in us that way we there's nothing he can't tell me. Because okay. right now he's 19, he'll be 20 this year. And so there's nothing that we don't tell each other. There aren't conversations that we don't have. There isn't time, like he doesn't, oh, my mom wants to spend time with you. He wants to spend time with me. We've traveled together. Okay, and so I made sure that even though I was trying to do these things to set him up, that I was making sure I was checking in with him. Mm -hmm. If I could take him, he was gonna go. Because um, just like we had another young lady, Miss King, who she is a juvenile detention um, person who works, at, works there and she takes care of all of these kids. And she and another young lady was on our platform, and the other young lady said that um, because she put all of the emphasis on those kids and mm -hmm. treat them like her kids at home was lacking mm -hmm. for the attention. And, and I've heard else. that. Yeah. I've heard that from parents, and I'm like, how? Because I think a, with working with Shannon at mm -hmm. Hamilton, a lot of kids, a lot of times when I would see kids kind of neglected by their parents, or their parents don't know what to do, or mm -hmm. hearing the words, oh, I want to hang out with them. I. Like, I could verse you in Teen Titans Go. I could tell you about <laughs> yes. Pokemon because my son would pop quiz me. So I knew I had to be ready and prepared, but I was in his space. And so I knew what he loved to do. And to, to think that my child is bothering me. I may be tired, but there's nothing that he couldn't ask me to do that I wouldn't do. Do you ever feel like you're overcrowding him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he fine, though. <laughs> he's, fine. he's fine. But I don't think, you know what? We have our space. Like, he'll come home and sometime I'll go get like go lay in his bed and talk to him for like five minutes and then it's fine. Like the other night he was in my room for three hours talking and I was like, I gotta go to work. Does his father play <laughs> part in his life at all? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say he's laying in bed with him and all that is no, confusing as hell no. to a boy. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like unless his father's <laughs> taking him and doing some stuff with him, Mama, you know, I've heard these stories where mothers say, you know, I was the mama and the daddy. Well, no, you wasn't. No, 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 no. I was you know not the You was no, not no. the mother and the father. No. You may have been a good mother, but you was not the mother and the yeah. father. Yeah. That, yeah. that plays a significant role, you know? You know, and both of us then have our fathers in our lives. And so no matter how much we may have had bumped heads or even not liked each other that day, we will put our face together and make sure that he had a father and he had a mother. I like it. And it, it was a struggle for us, but we just, you know, struggled on a background, but made sure he had a, a front. Like, if he asked us supposed to go to the movies, we were like, but we'd be in that movie theater watching a movie with him. <laughs> but and we would go our separate ways, but we had to because we yeah. wanted him to not be without either one. You know, but when I look at what you're saying, what keeps coming to my heart is the fact that for you to go through what you went through, you your counseling, whether it's counseling or just your gift, more importantly to me would be the fact of being a single parent and being able to do it in the way that you've done it mm -hmm. when you're dealing with people who've been through that situation or getting ready to go through mm -hmm. that situation. That's the that's the thing that keeps poking at me as I'm talking with yeah. you. Yeah. Like that part right there I seem like like I know what I go through it, it becomes something where we can reach out and mm -hmm. like things you've went through or you yeah. went through those are where we're powerful at because we know we're telling mm -hmm. you everything that yeah. we went through mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. something we read in a book but it's something that life put in our face yeah. I was pregnant when I was this age mm -hmm. and, and I was going to college and you get a girl to come sit in front of you and say well I got pregnant mm -hmm. you know I can't do it yeah, you see what not? I'm saying yeah. and then you can give yeah. her reassurance yeah. when somebody like a, a, a male counselor or somebody who have never had a child and go through the experience 
wouldn't be able to do mm -hmm. that. True. So that's 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 powerful. Yeah. And mm -hmm. saying that recently we had a young lady on here and um, she went through abuse when she was four. four. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, she went to counseling and all of that, but she felt like, and I asked her, do you feel, feel like the counseling even helped? Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, because with what she had to go through, they reiterated her whole scenario of what happened mm -hmm. over and over mm -hmm. and over every day. And partially to me, it was an investigation to try to see if what you went through mm -hmm. actually happened. Mm -hmm. And she said she understood that part, but not over and over. So mm -hmm. because of that, she had nightmares. She, she can tell you everything of what happened to the T because it's almost like they rehearsed it every day because mm -hmm. of the questions that she, but she's like, that shouldn't be for a four-year-old child. Mm -hmm. But it had its good and bad because now she's in the music and one of the traits that they try to help her to do is to write down a lot of like um, what she was going through, whether through song or whatever, mm -hmm. so that made her to be a, a good songwriter. But the other part was them reiterating yeah. that every day. And she's like, she wants to go back to be a psychologist or psychiatrist because she wants to change that. Because mm -hmm. for kids, they shouldn't do that for children. For her being that person on the other side, it does not work. It does not help. And yeah, a child but, can't turn to yeah. a counselor and say, I don't want this. Yeah. yeah. But, but and then for her, I'm sorry, for her uh, age group, say, if she, if she, so it happened at four, they caught it at four, mm -hmm. it may have been for the investigation. Exactly. And that's, yeah. and and that, that's, and that's the, and that's the bad part that. about it. They no. should have had somebody on the other side. Yeah, doing not talking about it at all, That's but making right. sure she was stabilized. And then you got the investigator over here trying to get the details to make right. sure they put yeah. whoever behind bars. But I think that piece on the other side was missing of how do we get this child stabilized? How do we make them back I to agree. a four-year-old and not focus on the investigation yeah. part? So this sounds like that's what was missing. Right, because like that, that person who was asked, when we were talking to her, she was like, that was a counselor. Mm -hmm. it, she didn't make it sound like that was the it investigator. It may have been, because they do have those like counselors who are in the role yeah. of, because you got to be able to talk to get the, you got to yeah, know the to yeah, get them, but yeah. you got to have that other person. Well, I said, like, you know, yeah. also, um, I, I know I've seen a situation in my family where a young girl had said that something had happened to her, but if she was coerced by her mother. Mm -hmm. So it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. It does. So you can't just look at it all. We can't ask these questions because at some point those questions, if it's some, uh, co you know, some coercing going on by the parent because they're mad at another individual, then you don't want to leave that person victimized as well. So you need to be trying to figure this out. This mm -hmm, is a very true. touchy, complicated situation. Mm -hmm. it is. But it's definitely something that you have to, I say pray. You know, I don't know what y'all, y'all might be Muslims <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. They still pray. You know, a lot. Yeah, they do yes, tours. They, yeah. I know. Yeah, five times a day. Yeah, you got the right one over here. <laughs> so, <laughs> they, yeah. But at any uh but at any rate, you know, you gotta you gotta definitely know that the decisions that's being made for both parties are being looked mm -hmm. at in the correct manner because mm -hmm. um, there's a lot going on with a lot of things, man. And I'm not just you know I have to be the you know I have to look at it from both sides. That's all. Mm -hmm. I mean because that's the last thing my father told me about when he passed away uh, about his brother and some stuff mm -hmm. that was going on to where if he hadn't have did what he did, it would my my uncle would have been in a lot of trouble and you know and like i said it's a touchy situation archivius armstrong was on here he flew in from north carolina he's a motivational down. speaker yeah, and he went he, through a lot he um was um uh, molested mm -hmm. four times mm -hmm. before he was uh 12 11 11 12 mm -hmm. yeah and um two by female and two by male two by male relatives in the family um you know this stuff is serious yeah and we don't talk yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, it's the it's the it's the yellow elephant in the room. But in today's society, do you find that there are more people coming up and talking about it because they've made it? I would say that almost the Me Too movement helped a little bit because people felt more comfortable. Women felt more comfortable getting up and say, "This is what happened." Because compared to when you were younger and something happened and you went and told your mom, and she's like, Sh "You know, mm -hmm. don't tell nobody because I don't want anybody to look at you." as being a victim or look at you, you got to be strong. Whether it be because the mom had went through the same thing mm -hmm. when she was younger and that's what her mother told her to do. So now she's telling her child, this is the same thing, you know, this is what you need to do. Just 
brush it off, act like nothing happened, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But nowadays you find more people saying, hey, because they're having more avenue to show the procedures of what to do, go to the police, do this, do that. Do you believe that to be true? Well, I think now people are more self-aware. Mm-hmm. Like understanding what happened to me as a child directly affect me as an adult. So I'm getting a lot of adult clients that thought that they were over it, right? Even though they never saw a therapist, mm-hmm. even though they probably talked to their mom, went to the police, it was reported, and they thought they were over it, right? Because that's the word they use. Oh, I thought I was over it. But then life happens and something triggers them. And so that incident that happened maybe 15 or 20 years ago is now showing up in their life. And so I think the Me Too movement brought like a self-awareness to people to understand that, okay, what happened to me as a child is gonna directly affect me as an adult in my relationships, Mm -hmm. right? Because it's hard to find a healthy relationship Mm -hmm. if you've been traumatized as a kid Mm -hmm. and you don't know what a healthy relationship is. Can they be over it? Is is there such a thing as being over a traumatic no, and no. that's like the worst. It's the most insensitive yeah. thing you could tell anybody. Yeah. It's like you stubbing your toe, and your husband being like, "Man, this still ain't hurting you. You don't feel this pain in my big yeah. toe. Like I'm not over it." <laughs> now, how would you know? <laughs> Let me just go there for a minute. I'm just saying, I yeah. just feel it in my spirit. That that's what happens. That's just what happens. Now, I I get it. You want to throw your scenario out there, but uh, let me just go over that with my wife, mm-hmm. right quick. <laughs> Baby, have you stumped your toe lately? You know. <laughs> No, I get it, man. You know, um, I just, hey, all I know is from where I come from and what I believe, I believe that there is healing. Mm -hmm. I believe that God can wipe things clean. I really do. If it's not true, then what I read is not correct Mm -hmm. because it says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's it's a new slate. You get to start over because what happens is if you tap into what you really believe in and you really are uh, one that's spiritually grounded, then you, not what your mom and them taught you, not where you went, all that, but really get a connection with God, yeah. I believe that there's healing according to what I believe. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's one of my biggest cur- concerns. She know mm-hmm. when it comes down to counseling and everything else, I put God first. So question with that, if you say you got a big gash on your arm, Okay. And you don't you don't have a needle and three to sew it up. Mm-hmm. God can heal it. Yeah. It'll but leave are a you scar. are you gonna go to the doctor's office? I have never had that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I would go to the doctor. I'm mm-hmm. not saying you can't go to the yeah, doctor. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that you have to have an understanding of healing that, that it don't just come from a Correct. man. And I'm Correct. gonna tell you something, Correct. going to that doctor can make or break you as well. Yeah. There's yeah. much, oh, yeah. there's so many stories I can tell but you about that. Where that is concerned too, like a cousin had brought awareness to, to me about certain things because I just never thought about it in that way because sometimes we don't think about certain things until somebody mentions it. Mm-hmm. And um, what she said to me is that when she go to any doctor or anybody, she always asks them before she go, she'll call and say, hey, does the doctor believe in God? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, do they have a personal yeah. relationship mm-hmm. with Christ? Mm-hmm. Yeah, get real with it. And if they say it. no, okay, move on to the next one. Because yeah. for you to be able to advise me, you have to get some sort of direction from him. Mm-hmm. And I never thought about it that way because growing up, you know, you just went to the doctor. You just went to, over here, did this, do that. Yes, you went to church and all that, but you never thought about the person, whoever. Mm-hmm. If you're doing surgery, you got to make sure that person believes in God, especially yeah. if that's your belief. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because you know that... Th- God is going to guide their hands to do what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, yeah. Like I said, and, and, and hey, man, it's really, it's something you really have to, you have to, you have to really, you, you, you got to go get checkups. You got to go do these mm-hmm. things. Technology has us to where, you know, and, and, and our doctors have us to where we're in a better place. We know mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But you also got to know that God is real. It's, yeah. it's a balance. You yeah. got to have balance and even spirituality. If I, if I come in here, and just get my Bible, it's in the truck or somewhere, and put it on here, and all we want to do is talk about that and act like we're not on earth, mm-hmm. then that's not going to help nobody either. Yeah, sure. So you got to have balance. Yeah. That's and true. sometimes people are f- trying to find their way back. Like when you think about people who are dealing with abuse from the church, or when you think about people who are yeah, dealing that with a, lot. A, b- a church abuse from within a family, yeah. they, they want to all their heart go back to what they know, but they have... Sh- 
like they have kind of mixed up their bad things that happened to them and God. Yeah. And so sometimes like a couple of my clients, they're like struggling like yeah. with their relationship. Yeah. And, I, and sometimes they'll sometimes they'll bring it up and sometimes I'll say, you know, can we can bring God in? Are you good with that today? <laughs> and sometimes they're okay. And sometimes they're like, nah, sis, I don't want, I don't want God in here today. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm good with that because I know sometimes we, you know, we treat him like that, but he's a parent. He understands. Yeah. And then sometimes they're like, what's that Bible verse? All right, let's bring it in. Wow. And some people but they're are trying to bring yeah. at him yes. where they just don't even want to hear his and, name. And, and they don't want you to tell him and, nothing. But yeah. that's a projected way that they've been taught. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, if you get to know God in a way to where it becomes personal, instead of you thinking that you have to go through a man to get to God, mm-hmm. then all these things, these mm-hmm. scenarios, they start, they start to change. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest issue that we have. Yep. Because God showed us that we could go directly to him mm-hmm. after whatever. Uh, if you read, you know this, mm-hmm. but a lot of people in tradition, they don't understand that. So they think until I get to pastor or until I do this, I'm not connecting to God. Yep. And that's the biggest crop of you know whatever yep. that you could ever ever say. You yep. know, it's not real. Mm-hmm. That's not what God's word should states and 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 that's why i have an issue with it Mm -hmm. because you didn't go and do your research and Mm -hmm. tap into god now you want me to be stipulated by whatever Mm -hmm. little concentrated thought that you've put up about god yeah and that's what people do not only do do people that don't know these are people that are in the churches these are leaders in the churches controlling people by using Mm -hmm. scriptures and all and that's why it comes in and Mm -hmm. they just don't know what to do like you know when we think about our profession we have so many young men mm-hmm. who were led astray by men yeah. in the church. So now mm-hmm. I don't trust men. Mm-hmm. I may be homosexual. Mm-hmm. I don't understand this relationship mm-hmm. with God. So yeah, how all this mix of things that are wrapped around this entity of church, mm. but it's not, you know, they're not, like you said, going back to mm-hmm. the Bible and seeing those they pieces. Not, not read. What and percentage so, of clients um, come into you? Oh, it's a high with, percentage. I know the question. <laughs> with <laughs> stuff like that. Oh, it's bunch. I've yes. had, surprisingly, and I think it's because of how I was raised and just being <laughs> raised in the church. He just be sending Send me money. Like, like, yes. like, they going on. over there. Yes, and I'm like, I, I, I intentionally did not put Christian counseling on my profile. <laughs> I, I don't want it. But don't they don't want coming it. anyway. But they coming. Yeah, that's right. They, they it's, coming. It's, it's your ministry. Mm-hmm. Well, not only is it a ministry, it's a big issue that we mm-hmm. have in society today because everywhere you go, people are telling you this is what you need to do, and a lot of times it's not correct mm-hmm. and, and and we think just because it's white and has a steeple on it that it's going to save people when a lot of time in actuality it's false gospel mm-hmm. it's it's the spirit of error mm-hmm. and, and, and and we try to act like oh just because they went it's all good but it's not like mm-hmm. that and the things that you're talking about that people come to you for a lot of people would not think to come to a counselor for that they think to oh let me go find another pastor or let mm-hmm. me go find another preacher they wouldn't think about coming to a, a, a counselor to ask these unless questions. they was like uh, aing who yeah who the pastor pretty much um you know was, was his father and he had to hide it and he didn't get to talk to him because his father had a wife and he everybody had a couple else of kids in the church yeah. and he and, and he still was he didn't want teaching and to preaching to this yeah. day yeah yeah this is happening mm-hmm. yeah so yeah he, yeah and he's probably but what i think about mental well because growing up i didn't hear about mental illness a lot mm-hmm. i heard about if you heard about mental illness Thought somebody was crazy because mm-hmm. somebody is crazy so nobody nobody categorized any of these issues so some people that older generation like at first when it started happening everybody's talking about mental illness i'm like you so soft like like everything is just mm-hmm. mental illness that's like OCD people don't always talk about OCD as much mm-hmm. but now you're so clean and you has to be a certain way and it has oh you OCD I'm like no I just like how things mm-hmm. are supposed to be so but I understand the different severity of mental illness mm-hmm. and um, you have some people who haven't gone through that much and just because their, say example, their mom didn't give them any attention, so they all of a sudden the way how they treat women now is different because of that. Mm-hmm. But they don't know why I treat women like that, so they're coming to counselor to f- figure out why do I treat women mm-hmm. like that? Because I have a, a marriage that I'm trying to save, and I'm trying to figure out why am I like this towards her? Mm-hmm. And they got to go back to figure out, okay, this is where it start. But everything to me is traditional sin. Because even like I was listening to um, um, Secret Minds of a Millionaire. and so um, by T. Harvecker. Yes. And okay. it talks about um, changing your, your mindset. Because we don't realize our blueprint is what he calls it. We get that from seeing our parents mm-hmm. or 
say example, <clears throat> sorry, say example, our parents said, um, I said I wanted to be rich as a child. And my mom said to me, oh, rich people are selfish. They're this, they're mm -hmm. that, that, that. I'm growing up with a frame of mind that I don't want to, even uh -huh. subconsciously, uh -huh. that yeah. I don't want to be a millionaire because I'm going to all, all of a sudden be selfish. Uh -huh. And it talks about stuff like that. So it just could be the smallest thing yeah. somebody yeah. say to you that all of a sudden, subconsciously, you become that. Correct. Yes. It's like even when you think about kids, when if a mom constantly tells, like if they have a, she has a bad relationship with the dad, she tells, you're just like your dad. But all he hears is negative about his dad. I'm going to pick up those traits that think I'm just like my dad and vice versa with the mm -hmm. mom. And so there are things that we learn that are that are said to us, even like women with worth. If a child, a girl is never told that she's beautiful within her home, within her safe space, then mm -hmm. the first person that says she's beautiful is this dude mm -hmm. at school or something. That's where she's going to realize that's where my worth comes from, because nobody at home feels at home yeah. feels like I'm beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so we have to that's why we have to take it to the kids and making make sure that they can trust home because I tell my son all the time, the, your, your homeboys are going to tell you how great something is. I'm going to tell you the real part of it. I'm going to tell you the aftermath. Yes, it's going to be great in this moment, but these are the steps that's going to happen afterwards. And so we have to be able to have those conversations and treat our children as such. So that way, when they get older, the first dude who tells them they're beautiful is not the one that's also going to abuse them. It's not the one that's going to take advantage of them. It's not the one that's going to break them down to their lowest because they never got that stability at home. Yeah. What does treat me? Sorry, what does treatment so. look like from a counselor? Because I know with a psychiatrist or psychologist, they can prescribe. So mm -hmm. what does treatment look like from a counselor? It really depends on your modality, right? So that's just the way we counsel people. Like I'm CBT, which is cognitive behavior therapy, meaning I really believe that everything we do, our behavior stems from what we think, like, mm -hmm. you know, what we've been talking about. So the same thing, like if, you know, just today I was telling someone, you know, growing up, sometimes, you know, like you said, uh, your mom might tell you, oh, um, you're never going to be anything. Well, you're going to grow up thinking I'm never going to be anything. Mm -hmm. But to combat, guess what? You got to tell yourself every day, I will be somebody. I am worth it. I deserve it. You have to constantly tell yourself that every day. And it's hard to get females to understand that concept because they don't never hear it. And so when you tell them, you know, you got to repeat that stuff every day. They're like, well, I got to repeat that stuff every day. I don't believe it. Well, you have that belief system you have because you heard it somewhere down the line and you told yourself that over and over again. And so that's why you believe that. So guess what? So now you got to reframe the way you think about yourself. Now you have to tell yourself, I'm worth it. I deserve it. I need more. I'm going to get more. You know, you have to mm -hmm. tell yourself that constantly every day. And so it is a battle because if you don't get that nourishment at home growing up and then you're an adult trying to figure out, okay, why my life is like this, it's hard to kind of make those connections and help them to understand is because your belief system, you know, the way you were raised, have you thinking one way about yourself. And really you can actually do better and you can actually get this done. When I think about what y'all are saying, both of y'all <laughs> and you. All three of y'all, I still go back to the Bible where it says yeah. you're fearfully and wonderfully mm -hmm. made. Yes. If you're training your child up, and the Bible say you're gods. The Bible say you're, you're, uh, you're, you know, like you're a chosen generation, a peculiar people. It tells you all these things. Mm -hmm. So if you're teaching your children this, if it's something you believe in, then they should know their self-worth come through God. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's where people, they take it to a, I want to make it to where you can understand it without God. Mm -hmm. And then they come back to God when they get do you have any issues? Mm -hmm. And they say, mm -hmm. you know what? I got saved. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if we were training our children up the way God's mm -hmm. word say, you would already be educating them as they grow up like we do our children. Mm -hmm. But true or false, um, just like Archivia said in his um, interview, he grew up not knowing God, not hearing about God. He didn't learn about God till he actually went to prison mm -hmm. and picked okay. up the Bible. Mm -hmm. So you have some children who go through things not even knowing anything about God. Mm -hmm. I agree with that 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with that so wholeheartedly. But what I'm saying for the people who do so-called have a relationship with God, when they're getting taught under the spirit mm -hmm. of error because they go into some building and they ain't even telling their kids about the word. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's be real. People don't really read the Bible like that. Mm -hmm. They're not they, even, they, or they, don't, they're, they don't get it taught. They wait till somebody mm -hmm. show them or tell them. Yeah, yeah. So Are they we, doing different? They're, like in the verse you just quoted, they're using it as an abusive manner. You know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, if anybody, like, um, like if you get A's or you think you're haughty because all of a sudden I got A's on this thing, you know, you know, you didn't get them A's. God got those A's. So it's, it's really so parents, it's that. religious abuse. And yeah. that's why you have kids who kind of like, 
I, we all get it. We are here because God made sure we mm-hmm. drove down mm-hmm. 20 and got here today. Mm-hmm. But we also know, you know, that we, you know, somebody down the line taught us how to drive and that we, you know, such and such wasn't texting and driving. So we weren't, you know, so we know the angels are with us. Mm-hmm. But there are so many people who use it. Just I can twist imagine the word. some people yes. using it as a way of control. I yes. do. I, do, I yep. can see that. Some people. But do would. we, do we act as if it's not real because there are evil no, spiritual weakness no, in higher no. places? No, we're just or do seeing we this educate right, yeah. and yeah. try to make sure we combat it because what happens a lot of time, just like Nas X and all these other singers that's putting out evil music and all that, if we don't have platforms set up to make positive change, it. then it's not gonna, we're not doing what we need to be doing. So if we fight these battles in a way that we try to strategically do it in a way to where, okay, it fits and you can relate to it better. Do we leave the essence out of the word of God when we, if we don't decide to teach him that way? You know, I know a lot of times counseling, because a person that already went through it, they have to have you because mm-hmm. they've been yeah. through hell and high mm-hmm. water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But where do we start to say, hey, man, you got to influence this in the home, you know, if it's a mm-hmm. little child? Yeah. Do we even care? You know, if yeah, we, we do. But we I'm do. just saying, do we? I mean, do we? You know, y'all <laughs> might, but I'm just saying, That's certain true. people. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, you know, certain people going to be like, no, nah, you got to do it this way without even excluding God. Mm-hmm. And they're not going to come out their situations. From what I believe, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. they're going to go right back. Y'all going to make a lot of money is what I'm telling you. Because they're coming right back. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm telling you yeah, now. Yeah, we, we know. they coming <laughs> right back. You're going to be there 15, 17, 22 years. They'll be back every time. Mm-hmm. Do you, you ever know? have um, clients that you have to reprogram their minds, so to say, and tell them, okay, look in the mirror, say you're beautiful, you're beautiful, and they actually do it, and then they do believe it where mm-hmm. they don't need it anymore? Yeah, definitely. I mean, but that's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is when they come to see you, you know, you said therapy goes up, but the goal is for them to reframe how they think about themselves and be able to, you know, be a, you know, productive part of society without having those negative thoughts about themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. We all have negative thoughts about ourselves. We all, you know, but at the same time, you know, some people are more intense than others, Mm -hmm. but you want, you know, you give them the strategies to say, okay, when I have that thought, this is how I'm going to combat that thought. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to have it, but I understand it's not real. So I'm going to, you know, change it the way I think about myself and, you know, think something else about myself. Have you ever had to have counseling yourself, either one of you? Yeah, she, she, said, she did. Yeah, she yeah. Said she yeah did. what happened? Let's talk about that. Well, what do you mean, what happened? How come you end up in laying down, down on the chair? <laughs> you remember <laughs> she told us that her husband had passed away, so she did um, Okay, but let's, let's and, yeah. and that was the only time you did counseling? Well, no, because yeah, I, I did it. That. Let's I mean, get I into did it. it. Well, because. <laughs> Well, but even after that, I had to go to because even okay. So once you enter into the counseling program, yeah. you go. They make you go Keep through going. counseling. Yes, you never went. In a process. Yeah, we have to yeah. because okay. we, yeah. you think about all the things, all yeah. the stories, and all the things that are told to us. We kind of need an outlet too to yeah. be like, I can't. Not necessarily I can't take this home, but making sure a self check with ourselves yeah. to make sure we're good. And it's a, it's a part of our self care. Yeah. And we would look like hypocrites if we didn't feel comfortable going to yeah, counseling. Totally. Okay. And that's so funny you said that because we were just talking about the I'm other day, asking. the other day, how policemen, I the things that they that. see on a daily basis and how that must affect them. And um, I guarantee you, all of them don't go to counseling. Mm. Because that's why a lot of things they react to in a certain way that's not really appropriate, but they're human beings, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because they're not going to counseling to, to let off that load of things that they've seen. You know, people see dead people all the time. How can you go home and, you know? It's like yeah. a sign of weakness. Like, that's my passion, like, uh, working with military and first responders mm-hmm. and police officers yeah. about the process. Because just because you, having a moment where you break down because of something you saw, you walk into a crime scene and you see kids, I can't imagine that. And so you you gotta have somewhere to let that go in order to be your whole self. And that's like as we as people, like you're, you're a dad, you're an entrepreneur, you're a husband, but if you aren't you, you can't be great at those other things. And yeah. we have to take care of our who we are at the core in order to put ourselves out into the world. So as a police officer, if you aren't taking care of who you are as that person, right. that man, mm-hmm. then you're going to suck at being a police officer. You're going to suck at being a husband. You're going to suck at being a dad because you aren't taking care of your vessel. But like you said, um, you can't imagine what they had you know, went through. Experience. How can you advise them knowing that you hadn't even been through that? You haven't seen that. How can you advise them? I just talk like what is it like my first client I was scared it was a a marine and I just knew I was oh lord we're gonna have a whole (laughs) bunch of best client ever because all he wanted to 
was to feel heard. He had never felt heard. He didn't feel heard when he was growing up, had an abusive dad, and then went to the military and was, the, you know, was told to go different places. And so it's just like he just wanted somewhere to feel heard and to get his story out. And once he did, he, and he started processing. It's so funny because somebody in the military, we were talking, because we go around and we talk to everybody everywhere, and he was saying that in the military they would tell you, you can't go to counseling if you want to be promoted because it shows a sign of weakness. Oh, it's a battle. So yes. a lot of people will not seek counseling. Mm -hmm. And even for those people that he was talking about, that they did, you know, rise up the rank, but now they're out. And that they're out, they still won't see counseling because mm -hmm. in their mind they're thinking, if I go see this counselor, it means that I'm weak. But you need to unpack all of that stuff that you've seen in the military. And you would think they would want that, but that's I could be on here. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, well, when you um, you went to counseling, okay. <laughs> and um, when you was in counseling, I mean, um, did you did you act right? Did you were you a good counselee? What is, like was our own time? Yeah. Was you, <laughs> no, did you, let, did let, you, let, did you open up? Did you open up? It's hard. It's hard. It's hard, uh, 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 it's hard uh, uh, to open up. <laughs> It's hard or to be did you vulnerable. Find, or did yeah. you find out things about yourself while you were in counseling when they went back you to your on. past that you didn't even realize that that even affected you? Um, I can't say I did because my first sessions were was with the school. And so I you know, like I know I have daddy issues. Not daddy issues, but I have daddy issues. <laughs> but you know, like my dad was an alcoholic and so okay. there are some things surrounding you know too. that that you know you all have issues black with. Black dads was alcoholic. <laughs> you trying to come not with something deep. My dad was not an alcoholic. Oh yeah, he uh -oh. Was lie. No, he did no. not. <laughs> <laughs> now all I'm saying is people go through things, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, what being a black person, okay, when you start to look at what our people endured, mm -hmm. everybody need counseling. Mm, yes. Fathers were stripped from mothers. Mothers were stripped from kids. Do you believe uh, that that I comes talk? down from what? generations? Well, I just don't no, know. It's, 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 it's <laughs> the same thing. I'm trying to do my spiel here. She part, took it. It's apart from what you're saying. All I'm saying is there's a lot of work to be done yes. in our culture. Yeah. Do you, you know? think it comes so. down? I don't know. It's it's so many levels. What you mean? You said it don't come down? No, no, no. It's because not that you it don't always come say down. that. So I want to hear yeah. from their you said professional. It don't come. I did say. I did. Did you say it don't I come? Don't, come I didn't say that. Let her answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning from from, I from me all of those years. <laughs> from all of those years. I'm gonna cut this part. <laughs> go ahead. I'm from just all of those years of what black people had to go through. You don't think it's passed down? I think our heritage is lost. Like we don't. Our sense of family is, we have a strong sense of family, but we also have a strong sense of loss. And mm -hmm. so it's, we oftentimes either go one way or the other where we like really cling to our family or we're easy, just like put them yeah. to the side. And when you think about those bondages, those things that are broken, how mentally strong do you have to be to just be like, I had a wife and kids and I gotta keep pushing, yeah. you know? Yeah. And and so it's just like that, that um, uh, there's a book and I cannot think about it, but it talks about how Women, their ovaries are formed at birth, like mm -hmm. at conception. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. your ovaries, mm -hmm. so that means I was in my grandmother. Oh, yeah. We was in the and same whatever session. trauma, yeah, whatever yeah. trauma she experienced, dope. I That's experienced. Dope, right? yes. And so it just talks about how generationally we don't, we don't, we don't really see that or understand why we have these generational curses because we were there. Yeah. Yeah. In spirit. Shannon, what do you think? Because <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, Christina has given us her, her spiel, <laughs> and uh, I just want to know what you think because. I know, being from New Orleans, <laughs> you definitely know what's going on, you know? I mean, I do think it is generational. I do, because I encounter so many women, let me tell you, that experience something, do not tell their parents, mm -hmm. but then when they decide to open up to their parents, the parents reveal, oh, that happened to, to me. me too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though, because in a lot of times we think it's protection, like, we, okay, I'm going to protect my child, so I'm not going to tell her what happened to me. But then in the minute you trying to protect her, the same thing happened. Mm -hmm. Even though she don't know, she go through the same thing. And you see, I'm the total opposite, whereas I'm thinking if I went through something, I don't want that to happen to her, so I need to make her aware mm -hmm. of the signs and things to look for so that does not happen to you. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would think. But so many parents go into protective mode. Yeah, I'm not going to share because I'm protecting her. Mm -hmm. right? But that protection ultimately leads her to do the exact same thing 
you went through. All right now. So I do think it's generational. Might be a preacher. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I did yeah, go to Southwest. Yeah, Southwest. I know that's right. <laughs> they down with it. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I can say is you guys are, you guys are definitely um, are needed. I mean, I I've definitely never went to a mental illness or nothing because I feel like God is my counselor. <laughs> He's always saying. And that. I'm just gonna be real with y'all. And and I don't know what everybody else go through, but I know when I hit my knees or when I'm trying to, I will just. I let it go. And mm-hmm. some things I know I've been through that, I mean, I dump on people, you know. I catch mm-hmm. an old lady out there sitting on a bench, and I say, you know what? And she, when I get up, she say, my God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. she, was, she was just trying to yeah, get to the bus. I dumped on the lady at the dollar <laughs> store one day. She said, oh, God. I said, yeah, that's what happened. And she said, okay, well, have a nice day. <laughs> she ended up trying to get her done in her baby so that you didn't <laughs> fix the whole spirit. Like, <laughs> but I always feel like everything you go through in life is for a purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, you know, good and bad, it's to help someone else. It's not really for you. So just like the things you've been through, you're using that to help someone else through counseling. Or it could be a, a stranger on the street, anybody. But I feel that everything is a lesson. So we need to pass on when we overcome. That's why I say that this platform is to help Mm -hmm. our listeners because it's so crazy. I would think that everybody leave their house and go places, but I remember being on the phone with a lady one time, and I remember how we ended up on the phone. And she was telling me, I don't leave my house at all, meaning like everything she orders online, it comes to her house. She said, I do not. I'm scared to leave my house. And I'm like, I thought this stuff only happened in the movies. Mm-hmm. I didn't know this is mm-hmm. real, that people actually mm-hmm. do not. And this is before pandemic, mm-hmm. that they don't leave their house. And I'm like, okay, I know she's not the only one. It's probably a lot of people out there. And I'm like, how do they get yeah. help? Mm-hmm. I remember when I was house hunting, and this was maybe about um, five years ago. I was um, looking for a house. And so they had a house in Duncanville, and i never forget. Now, this was in the midst of me graduating. <laughs> um, as a counselor but anyways uh we went to this house and a lady was outside and you would think because the house was for sale because usually when you're trying to sell your house you clean it up you try to make it look pretty this lady when you go in she was a hoarder like there was trash all i mean when you step in the door all you saw was trash and this lady was actually selling her house and so the counselor me kicked in because I was like, um, do you think, I was like, um, someone is here to help you. You know, why you, I'm asking her questions because I'm like, is no way in the world this lady is prepared to leave this house mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. condition that it's in. But she was at a point that she had to sell. But I was mad at the realtor because I'm like, you allowed, I was, you know, did you they get allowed down, that But did person. you get down to the nitty gritty of why she's, how she is? Why, why are hoarders the way they are? I didn't get down to that point, but I did tell my <laughs> realtor to report that realtor because I was like, it's no way this woman's house should be for sale because mentally she's not ready mm-hmm. to sell her house, but it was just the way that the house was I've just presented. Seen, we have seen, because the thing is that I've never seen anything like that until, you know, we watch, watching TV, you know, that show at Hoarders, whatever. Mm-hmm. I saw it, but it's a totally different when you see it on TV compared to when you see it in real yes. life. Mm-hmm. Because um, same thing, we knew someone about who, a month ago who was selling their house, and we went to see the house, and say this is the ceiling, right? Whenever I stepped into the house, the ceiling was right here, but naturally, if it was a clean floor, the ceiling would have been right there. Oh, so that's how much clothes oh, that was wow. in. And she was like, "Oh, this is the kitchen," and <laughs> even in the kitchen, you couldn't see nothing. I'm like, "Okay." She, I realized why she left every day. She probably went to buy food to eat mm-hmm. out because there's no way you can cook in that house. Mm-hmm. Um, you couldn't see the garage. You couldn't, I mean, her bedroom, you can't sleep in it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. In my mind, I'm like, how can you live like that? And yes, they didn't have any kids, but she was married. And I, I couldn't understand. I didn't they go into counselor like mode to find yeah. out, but it was curious. When you mm-hmm. said that, I'm like, why do people hoard? Is it that they're holding on to something that they've lost and they're trying to, you know, 
It could be we a number. Gain that? It could be a number of reasons, right? Because we this is the thing. Everybody have their own coping mechanism, right? Right. Everybody goes into you know <laughs> whether alcoholism or yeah, exactly. Whatever. Mm-hmm. So it be, could be collecting things, right? We all have our own coping strategies that we use when we're you know experiencing anxiety and stuff. And so that could be just her coping mechanism. Not that she was trying to hold on to anything, but maybe she felt like one part of her life was out of control. But I can control what's coming mm-hmm. in my house. So I'm gonna just buy up everything and put it in here, right? So it well, could how be. How does she convince her husband to feel the same way? I yeah, Miss Counselor. Yeah, because yeah, he was in there with her, mm-hmm. and he was really living there with her. And well, I he's see, an enabler, and he used though. to worry yeah. me he's every an day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he come over and talk to me. I say, y'all, you all go clean that front of that house up. You live next to him, <laughs> and I, I say the city came through here today. I just say little stuff to try to get him, <laughs> and he would clean it up after I tell him that, but. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he now they finally that. sold him when they did. I was going to, I thought about buying it until I went in. I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do this. I mm. can't deal with this. this mm. Even though it was a good deal, I couldn't see the floor. I couldn't see the walls. Exactly. You couldn't go in the room. The room was blocked out to where and everything was coming let out. Let me tell you yes. how many, how much things she had. Picture this. Um, it's a three-bedroom house, right? They took... Three huge truck loads. When I mean truck, it looked like, you know, like the 18-wheeler mm-hmm. back of the yes. truck? Three truck loads of stuff out. And it still even was full. It was, the, the garage was still jammed. They left a whole bunch of stuff there for Just whoever got it. it to clean the rest of it. And even then, when they came in, they probably yeah, another two truck. two big truck loads like that full. Oh, my oh, wow. God. That's how much yeah. stuff was in that house. So let's get back to mental health. Uh, Christina. What's the worst <laughs> thing you've seen? Now, let me ask Christina about <laughs> counseling, you know, um, abuse. Have you guys, girl, y'all ever been through abuse to where a man hit you? No, I haven't. Okay. You? No, I've been. Don't lie, because I, I was thinking about something a while ago. I said, mm-hmm. you know what? People not opening up, not even y'all. People not telling everything. Drop mm-hmm. it out. <laughs> you know what I'm now I'm being like, you, I've had those times. Did you hear what I just said? I've had I mean, a time. We sitting here talking, yeah. but a lot of times people not being real. I want to hear everything. Let's go. Get that camera on. (laughs) (laughs) We've all been in relationships where we've had a little bit more to test our boundary. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that I've never been hit, slapped, or anything like that. But I've been handled in a way that I was like, wait. Oh, somebody roughed you up? Yeah. Not roughed me. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) Shake you a little bit. (laughs) But I knew in that moment I didn't I like that to, feeling, I wanted to leave. and so I wanted to leave. And to, but when you think about abuse, a lot of times people don't leave because of the familiarity of abuse. Well, the reason they don't leave is because they grew up maybe seeing yeah, familiarity of abuse. Yeah. Like they, they mama yeah. went through something like mm-hmm. that. And some mm-hmm. I talked to one of my friends years ago, to, over twenty years ago, and he say, "Man, um, me and this girl was together, and when we got into it, uh, she wanted to go and have." You know, sex mm-hmm. like she wanted to. After we bro- had gotten into a big argument, when I would get getting relief, she ran into me and I pushed her back. Mm-hmm. And she said, "Come on, man!" I'm like, he was like, and that's the way she in her mind mm-hmm. felt like love mm-hmm. was was expressed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is what we deal with with mental illnesses. Mm-hmm. People yeah. get caught up mentally, like you was saying first off about the mind. You know, mm-hmm. the mind is something that the Bible even tells you that you have to mm-hmm. renew. Yeah. So these things are really ways when I hear counseling, most of the time that's why I go back to the word of God because mm-hmm. it always reflects something that came from a place there mm-hmm. that I can relate to because I read. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's the same thing you say. They should have read that. You know, mm-hmm. but everybody's not reading. Correct. Yes. Correct. So, and that's the part. That's the part right there. Mm-hmm. Or they have been reading, it goes back to that abuse. They have been reading just been twisted. Twisted. And it's also like if you think about it, if you put if we bring God in, if you think about it in a sense of like I have never I I'm a person I've never gone to church. I don't know about church I don't know about God but then they come across me or Shannon who do know about God and I'm not talking about out the gate we like let's pray no but no. eventually over oh. time as they start to bring it in you're able to like drop a little, drop bit, a little in, bit in and then they you kind of form yeah. their relationship and then you can send them out yeah. it's not about us being preachers or whatever but if this is like you say if this is my ministry he's going to figure out a way to, to make it work it for That's him right. That's true. and I don't have like I said I don't have to put Christian counsel on mine because I don't want anybody to come in feeling Local like they in. can't just yeah, yeah, be yeah. I'm going to come in with the, the, the gospel you're gonna plan you're going to stop some people from coming to yes, you as well who too. need, yes. who who need me that help yeah. because they yeah. see the Christian well, that, yeah. I don't want to hear about God that's what people say on here a lot of times. Yeah. First thing they say is this a Christian podcast? 
because mm-hmm. of the way we mm-hmm. talk about God. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell them no, because it's not. Mm-hmm. It's a podcast. Are there Christians here? Yeah. yeah. But at the end, Christ followers, or people who are in Christ, as the Bible says, mm-hmm. it don't say Christians like that. It's mm-hmm. a in Christ. That means, hey, yeah, we, we can talk about whatever, but just because you say this or that doesn't mean I'm going to say this or that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm the light that can lead you out of darkness. Mm-hmm. So I don't trip. You can mm-hmm. do what you want to do. You know what I mean? But yeah. if you keep messing with me, <laughs> it's going down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? yep. Yep. So I just know God been too good for me to, I, I will never deny him, but I will meet people where they're at. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's yeah. what y'all do. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. exact yeah. thing. Yep. I'm not trying to drag you anywhere. Yeah. You yes. And I always tell my clients, you come in, it's like you're going on a trip. You have all your suitcases. You tell me which one you want to unpack, and mm-hmm. we'll focus on that one. Wow. It's not mm-hmm. about unpacking all this And he's laying down, time. or she's sitting on the they chair? They're sitting in the chair. They're sitting in the chair. <laughs> 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 I watch the movies, man. Yeah, I used to go to the store. It's like, this is a couch. I'm going to have my couch in an office. Oh, it's comfortable. You can't get me a couch. Yes. Man, that be done fell asleep. Man, so, be mad. So, so have y'all ever thought about doing some things to where, and I know, are y'all are y'all independent? Are y'all private owned? Or yeah, So, yeah. I mean, like, I could do it, like, if people sign consent form, we could do a TV program where y'all talk about it. <laughs> That'd be dope. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk, yes. then let's like, talk oh, about it, right? Let's talk about it. We do yeah. the segment where we bring people on. That would be yeah. dope. We'd be like, oh, Counseling is popping. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody's into. Y'all, but it even, didn't used to be like this. But after the you know? pandemic, it even went up a lot more yeah. because yeah. people needed someone to talk. They were yes. isolated. Yes. They were so, I, people yeah. were so, I, Counseling went up because people were so isolated. Right. Like, if my habit is to go here after work, go do this on Tuesdays, go to the gym, go do this on Wednesdays, and then I was told in one day, to not do mm-hmm. any of that. What percentage yeah. you think went up? Man, Ooh. it was, I don't <laughs> even know the number. Oh, I was about wow. 300%. Wow. Miss it was, Richardson. Yes, uh, uh, it went up 300%. Was it more yeah. white, black, or is Everybody. It, yes. Everybody. And Everybody. then also the pandemic made you face whatever you were going through. Yeah. Right? Because we have, That's you know, real. if you're always busy, That's busy, so busy, you have all these distractions, mm-hmm. and now the world, everything is shut down. You have no choice but to face what you're going through because mm-hmm. you don't have all the distractions. You don't have no choice but to look in the mirror and say, you know what, this is what I'm dealing with. And so yeah. the pandemic helped a lot of people it too because, yeah, I'm like, Open you got to face this. Yeah. A lot of people don't like their kids now because of the pandemic. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, they didn't like them before. Is, that's true. <laughs> How is the they virtual like virtual counseling compared to in-person counseling? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. I love it. She don't have to leave the house. <laughs> She's sitting back. Yeah, well, like go it. ahead. She dressed from here up. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stand up. Accidentally. Definitely, you know. Um, it, I mean, but can for, you see every meaning? Like, you know. Do you, you think you're still helping? As much. Yes. Do you get the same feedback? Do you, can you. Do yes, because much? it forces you to be present. Right, because it's all it's you and a screen, and it forces you to be present, to pay attention to them, and nobody but them. Like you don't have a choice but to listen to what they're saying. Like in the office, you know, you can get distracted because you can give them worksheets. You know, you can do all kind of things in the office setting. But here, it's like it's you know, it's personal. And not only that, though, for me, I had to learn to read. You know, just facial expressions too, though, because mm-hmm. you know, in the office, you can read body language, and so it's hard. Mm-hmm. But like, say, for instance, if somebody come on screen and the camera is facing up and not their face, or they might be to the side. You know, you you can pick up on those kind of clues mm-hmm. right now say hey look you know can you turn up camera and face it to you uh, uh sometimes kevin samuels that's what he <laughs> says put your face back from that camera Have, mm-hmm. yes mm. well, oh she don't like <laughs> when i bring him up y'all don't know him i don't know him no, no. yeah good yeah. Okay. don't know him <laughs> but yeah. it's still certain little things you could pick up you know to see you know what they're going through because a lot right. of times you know they might be in their car and i'm like okay we don't do therapy in a car we need i need you to be home mm-hmm. you know we oh, so that is a criteria yes yeah, okay yeah, being our well, i can't go grocery shopping with you <laughs> call me why back. not <laughs> That's but convenient. in the car, we but, need but your the undivided car part, attention. Though, but in the car, honestly, because like when I'm driving on the street, that's a time when I, you know, think about everything, relax while I'm driving. So mm-hmm. I'm able to just tell you whatever while I'm driving mm-hmm. compared to being at home. Mm-hmm. You might have distractions. Yeah, mm-hmm. true. And we do have people that go to the park. And they'll tell you, hey, look, I don't have the, you know, the quiet time at home, so I'm going to just go to the park. And I'm okay with that, but not with you driving. We're not, yeah. we're not doing not therapy. Yeah, we're not doing how therapy. How can people get a hold to you guys if they wanted to, you know, to get, some uh, help. get some help? 
Well, I have a website. My um, private practice is called Whole Within Counseling. So it's www.wholewithincounseling.com. Or they can call me at 214-903-4434. Hey, that's right. Get that number. <laughs> um, Mr. Will's going to be mad. At you. <laughs> that's our business line. That's my business, that's my business line. <laughs> go ahead. You, you can go to either one of those. Oh, okay. So um, I'm at, um, my business is called Soul Continuum Counseling, and that's S-O-L-E-C-O-N-T-I-N-U-U-M counseling.com. And um, I don't know my phone number, so just go on there. <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Because, but that, you need to know yours for sure. I know. Get yours out of real, baby. Should have all them Christians calling. <laughs> oh my God. No, this, hey man, you guys definitely. Well, I want to know one more thing. One more thing. What is the worst case or the. You guys the yes. Ago. That mm-hmm. you've ever encountered and, and the outcome? We'll start with you, uh, Christina. Mm. You think about what she asked, Shannon. It's coming. Um, so mine was, and I don't want to give too many details, yeah, but it was definitely yeah. uh, family trauma. Mm-hmm. And um, like we were talking earlier, like a, a young man who was abused, and he was at a precipice of not knowing, am I gay because I was abused by a man, or am I gay because I want to be gay? And it's that, that, that was one of those moments where I didn't, I was like, how, how do we begin to unpack that? How do we, because when we know, and as you know, you hear about this in cases where people are, you know, oh, he was aroused or she was aroused. So that means she's, in, it wasn't rape. Like, no, you're going to be, you're going to, it's a pleasure center. So you, you touch me where I'm supposed to be pleasurable. There's going to be a reaction in my right. body. So as a young man, if I'm, I'm being touched in a certain way by another man and my pleasure center is activated, I don't know if, does that mean I like that? Or does that mean, and so, when your choice is taken away, now you got to make these decisions later on about, I don't know if I liked it back then or if I, you know, I don't know. And so it's, it's so many different things that, that come into play that we just just had to unpack, but it was becoming, you know, too much for him. But that was one of my hardest ones. I didn't get to see through to the end, but that's how deep some of these things go. How do you go. correct that? You, you can correct it. They have to correct that. And that's what, like, going back to we don't give them the answers. All I can do is talk to you. And let's, let, like I said, let's unpack some of this stuff. Let's see, you know, what's behaviors now. Like, how do you feel? Like, you know. And I get that because that's what Arkevia said. When you can talk about it, that's where the healing begins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most people haven't talked about It doesn't have power over things. you anymore. Yes. Correct. Yes. That's when so you can't talk about something, it does get, have power you, over you. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's just talking. And so you? It's on you now. I'm not gonna say Come this on, is Shannon. the worst drop one it, I've drop had. It like it's hot. <laughs> I'm not gonna say this is the worst one, but I often think about this, right? But it was just a girl, um, and so she wanted to let her mom know that she was gay. And so to hear, this is the thing for me. It changed my perspective of people in general because I related to the mom as a parent. And I felt so bad for this little girl, right? But anyways, but when she revealed to her mom and the way her mom spoke to her, like my heart went out to that girl because it was never any words that I would want to tell my daughter, Mm -hmm. regardless of how you, you know, (laughs) relate to or whatever. I felt so bad for this young lady because of the way her mom talked to her because she revealed this information. And I'm like, she was at a safe space to where she felt like she could tell mom and for mom to just backlash mm-hmm. on her, like my heart went out. And I think from that point on, honestly, I prayed about it and I was and I told I think I told you guys, I said, you know what? I'm open. You know, I could see anybody. Mm-hmm. And from that moment I've been getting a lot of LGBTQ so let me, let clients. Me just, let me say this. You know, meeting people at where they are. Again, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, you meet people where they are and at the end of the day, You know, whatever God is doing in that situation, it's a process, no matter which way it goes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the thing I say, you know, there's there's a lot. There is a lot to unpack with both of the situations Mm -hmm. that you guys just talked about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so many different ways people look at that. You know what I mean? Um, You know, and everybody got, but you have to let people heal because that's just one way a person Mm -hmm. shows uh, up. behavior pattern mm-hmm. or you know through sexuality some people can be too far over the top some people just hide it you know mm-hmm. you just don't know man what you're dealing with so i commend exactly. you guys for having to even have those conversations those are some hard ones mm-hmm. to have mm-hmm. um but have put god ever, first 
Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Have you ever gotten a case where you had to recommend them to a psychiatrist because you felt that they ne- they needed medication? Oh yeah, we get that all the time. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's, yeah. that's what they do. What's the yes. barrier of okay, you don't need medication compared to you do? Because I've had um, people who suffered with mental illness come on the platform, and one person would say, "Well, I have to have medication," and this other one would say, "No, I don't. I don't do, I don't do medication mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. whether I used to be on drugs when I was younger and any sort of medication." It's going to give mm-hmm. me that, you know, relapse sort of feel. So how do you know? But see, that's a different because you have to take that into consideration. Like even if there's a history of drug abuse in a family or even like you said before, if they say, OK, I was addicted to drugs before. In that case, you have to be, you know, kind of cautious with that person because there is a chance that they could get addicted to the medication that the doctor prescribed them. Right. So mm-hmm. it's kind of, you have to kind of, you know, fill your clients out, you know, to that perspective. But some clients, I mean, if your anxiety is so bad that it's interrupting your day-to-day experience, I tell them all the time, you may need to seek medication. Because there's so many people today that have told me that I never even knew they were on anxiety and all these other medications because once you're depressed or anxiety, it's, you get like a whole lot of medication. I'm mm-hmm. like, all of these medications have side effects. Yep. And yeah. I'm like, to me, they're not good for you. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you have to be able to find another way of how to control this, whether through meditation or something yeah. else. Well, it's yeah. almost like, you know, if you take that, take take the mental health out of it, like if you a doctor diagnoses somebody with diabetes, they yeah. say you have to take this medication or you can exercise. Some people choose to not do the work to get off the medication and take the, just take the medication. It's easy. I don't got exercise to take this medication. I could just do what I'm, I've been doing. And so when you think about mental health, there are things, mindfulness and yoga and all these things that can help you reduce your anxiety where you may take, you can get, kind of get off your medication, but you got to want to do that work. Mm-hmm. And that's the part we can't do for them. And so like Shannon says, if they are so anxious that they can't do anything, they can't function in life, yeah, you may need that medication. Mm-hmm. But let's on this other side, let's figure out a way to help you wean yourself off of this so that's that's i think about it in all those ways you have to want to do the work we can't do it for you i can't go home with you and be like remember what we talked about in session you want to do that today i can't do that i told you what to do i see you in a week how often do people (laughs) die from depression medication i'm not sure of that statistic Mm -mm. but i you know but to piggyback what she was saying is like i tell people all the time coming to see me every week that's easy Come here talking to me, unloading, venting, whatever you want to call it. That's the easy part. Mm -hmm. But when you get off this session and you actually got to put the work Mm -hmm. in, meaning the mindfulness, you know, meaning the yoga, whatever you need to do, reframing your thoughts, you know, coming up with affirmations, that's the hard part. That's the work, Mm -hmm. right? That's the part that they have to do themselves. Because, you know, they'll come and talk to you all day and vent and do all these things, but then they leave and they don't do anything. Right. So Mm -hmm. guess what? They're going to come back the next week in the same situation. Mm -hmm. They use you as a, a... what you call it, a crutch? Mm-hmm. Yes. Just to do, because the reason why I actually about um, people dying from that medication, because I ha- we had a friend who, um, she had lost her mom, and then um, two weeks later, because her anxiety and all the depression because of that, because her mom died just like that, it wasn't anything expected. And then um, soon afterwards, she was on all this medication, and then I think the doctor had switched the medication. Three weeks later, she and died. And she died, like, her husband was trying to wake her up that morning and she didn't and the day before no the day before is when he switched the medication and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden mm-hmm. the next day she, she died, died. Yeah. and you know i'm like okay they tried to say that the medication didn't jive. and what she t- and, and a lot of times that's true with all medications like you can be taking something that reacts to something and that's why a lot of times too we and psychiatrists are supposed to do too asking what all are you taking yeah. like are you taking thyroid medicine this medicine that medicine that medicine because they will react you got all those mm-hmm. chemicals in your body yeah. somebody's gonna not agree with something mm-hmm. and so but yeah i don't know the statistics on mm-hmm. that but that you know a lot of times people aren't just taking depression, depression medicine yeah. they're taking oh, so many other cold. things yeah well guys i'm gonna bring y'all back to earth <laughs> you know, which you've been in Earth, but a lot of those conversations were beneath Earth. <laughs> but I know, um, you know, you guys, um, you 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 definitely brought some awareness to our platform, right? Yes. And we appreciate y'all for coming on. You know, um, if you ever you got something going, you're trying to get something uh, out, researched or whatnot, or if you want to 
tell the masses this is the channel to come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I can even do your little uh, press run, too. I know a lot of people get you going mm -hmm. if you're really trying to get it out there. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys have been great, man. Thank you, guys. Okay? You're Thank welcome. You. Thank, Thank you for having you. us. God bless Thank you, and you. we love you. We love you, too. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out. Thank you.